Welcome back to the deep dive. Okay, picture this, a huge bridge, right, spanning a river, or uh, maybe a skyscraper, you know, way up in the clouds. Or even those deep sea pipelines. Exactly, carrying energy, all that stuff. What's the invisible thread holding them all together, making sure they, well, don't fail? It often comes down to the welds, their integrity. And the people who check them, the unsung heroes, really. So today we're... Pulling back the curtain on that um, critical world. We'll never look, yeah. We're doing a deep dive into welding inspection and quality, specifically. The CSWEP 3.1 Welding Inspector Certification. CSWEP, that's a certification scheme for welding and inspection personnel. It's a big deal globally. Right, sets the standard. So our mission today is to unpack what this qualification really means. You know, the skills involved, how rigorous it is to actually become a certified welding inspector. It's a shortcut, really, to understanding this vital quality control role. Okay, let's unpack this. And it's that unseen part that makes it so important to understand. I mean, getting that weld quality right it's just paramount for safety, for structural integrity. In so many industries. Oh, absolutely. Heavy manufacturing, construction, aerospace, you name it. And this document, it gives a really fascinating glimpse into the uh, structured learning, the assessment needed for such a critical skill. Shows how much goes into what seems like maybe a small detail, right? but with huge impact. Exactly. Massive real-world impact. So that impact, it's tied directly to the objectives of this CSWIP 3.1 course. If someone goes down this path, what are they actually, you know, gaining? What skills? Well, the source lays out some key things. Yeah, like uh, understanding the factors that influence the quality of fusion welds in steels. Fusion welds being where the metals actually melt together, right? Correct. Forming one solid joint and recognizing characteristics of different welding processes. Uh-huh. Specifically for quality control. Right. And crucially, interpreting drawings, those instructions, the symbols, making sure the specs are met. Mm. That sounds complex. It is. And then setting up and actually reporting on inspections, welds, Macro sections, other tests. Okay, macro sections, what are those exactly for our listeners? Think of it like a slice through the weld. You cut it, polish it, and look at the cross section. Ah, so you can see the internal structure, see if it fused properly. Precisely. You also learn to assess welds against acceptance levels. Check incoming materials. Make sure the materials are right before you even start welding. Yep, and understand what happens if they're not right. And, well... The ultimate goal is passing those level two exams. It all leads to that exam. What's really compelling here, I think, is how it all blends together. You've got the deep theory, mm. but also the hands-on practical stuff, and then the critical reporting side. It's not just knowing, it's doing and verifying. Exactly. Knowing, doing, verifying. That's essential in quality control, especially when safety and big investments are involved. That blend definitely seems key. And it makes sense when you look at the uh, the sheer range of topics the course covers. Oh, yeah. This is where it gets really interesting. The syllabus is, well, huge. Comprehensive is probably an understatement. Right. It goes into the roles, the duties of an inspector. Oh, yeah. Understanding welding defects, which must be a massive area. Absolutely critical, yeah. Defects are what you're looking for. Then the main welding processes, the symbols we mentioned, and NDT, non-destructive testing. NDT is fascinating stuff. It really is. Finding flaws inside the weld without cutting it open. Using, what, x-rays, sound waves? Sort of like a medical scan for metal, yeah. Yeah. Essential technique. The list goes on. Reporting, terminology, safety, obviously crucial heat treatments. Weldability of steels, joint design. Welding procedures, welder qualification. Stress and distortion, macro examination again. Code and standards are a big part, too. Oh, definitely. And consumables, thermal cutting. I mean, it's basically a whole field. Metallurgy, engineering, hands-on practice, all rolled into one. And if you connect that to the bigger picture, it just shows how specialized this is. It's interdisciplinary. You need to understand all these different elements. To get that holistic quality control, yes. It's not just about looking at a weld. It's the material science behind it, the engineering principles. The safety rules, the regulations. Exactly. And maybe a skill that's not obvious from the list, but you master it, is connecting those dots, synthesizing information across all those areas. Right. Seeing the whole picture, not just the individual points. That's the real skill. Okay. So the curriculum like that, the assessment has got to be tough. No doubt. The source says there's an exam at the end. And interestingly... No continuous assessment. So it really does all come down to that final exam day. It seems so. And before you even get to the exam, there are these prerequisites, really specific ones. Mm. Two passport photos signed on the back. Okay, standard enough. But then an eye test certificate. 
And this is where it gets very precise. Right. It has to show near vision and color test to an N4.5 or times Roman standard. N4.5, that's incredibly small print. Yeah. You have to be able to read that accurately. Think about spotting tiny flaws on metal. That precision. Wow. It tells you a lot about the job, doesn't it? Yeah. Visual acuity is just critical. You're looking for tiny imperfections, things you could easily miss. And maybe things even a machine might miss in certain uh, complex situations. You know, hairline crack, subtle discoloration. Things that only that trained, sharp human eye would catch reliably. Exactly. It underlines that human element in high stakes inspection. And you also need a completed exam form printable from their website, twitraining.com, and they stress it's your responsibility, the candidates, to provide all this. Get it wrong, and your results and certificate get delayed. They're not messing around. It sounds like gearing up for a secret mission. Huh, maybe a little. And the exam itself, it's not just like, one thing it's multi-part right assesses different skills so there's a 120 minute multiple choice section 80 questions so testing the theoretical knowledge then 90 minutes for 40 work pack questions which sound more practical like analyzing documents typically yes welding procedures inspection reports making decisions based on that info got it mm. and another 90 minutes for inspecting eight actual weld segments so, so hands-on putting that calibrated eye to the test on physical samples. Right. And they provide any needed standards or cleans on the day. That variety is key, though. It makes sure the assessment is well-rounded. Tests theory, application. And that crucial hands-on inspection skill. It mirrors what the job actually demands. Okay, so you survive the exam. What's the pass mark? It's clear. 70%. Okay. In every single section. Not just overall. Wow. No weak areas allowed. Nope. You pass, you get two copies of the certificate, an ID card sent to your sponsor. But it doesn't stop there, right? It's not just a one-time thing. Definitely not. You have to keep the certification active. How does that work? Well, first, there's a five-year prolongation. Basically, you need to keep an up-to-date logbook. Documenting your work activities? Exactly. Showing yeah. you're still active in the field. You present that to CSWIP. Okay. And then? Then at the 10-year mark, there's a renewal exam. Another exam. Yep. 30 general multiple choice questions and assessing another welded sample. So they really emphasize ongoing competence. They have to. Technologies change, materials evolve, standards get updated. Right. You need inspectors to stay current. It's a commitment. Ensures that quality and safety are maintained over the long term. Keeps inspectors at the top of their game. And just for context, this CS WIP 3.1, it fits into a bigger picture, doesn't it? There are other levels. That's right. There's the 3.0 visual welding inspector, which is sort of an entry point. Okay. Then the 3.1 we've been discussing. Above that, the 3.2 senior welding inspector. Mm -hmm. And even a welding quality control coordinator role. So there's a clear path for career progression. Absolutely. It's a structured system. Yeah. Allows people to build expertise, take on more responsibility. The 3.1 is often just the start of a really specialized career. So wrapping this up, what does this all mean for you, our listener? We've uh, we've really dug into the details here. The depth and specificity, yeah. For what might seem like a pretty niche feel, but this deep dive, I think it shows the incredible, meticulous process behind ensuring quality and safety. And things we totally rely on. Yeah, things we take for granted. Bridges, power plants, all held together safely because of work like this. And that's the big takeaway, isn't it? This whole CS WIP 3.1 process, it's a testament to how important applied knowledge is. That constant striving for excellence in technical fields. These certifications are critical. Especially when engineered structures are involved, where one failure could be catastrophic. Yeah. It shows that even seemingly small details like one weld need immense expertise, diligence, often from uh, unsung heroes. It really makes you think, doesn't it? About all the hidden expertise out there, the careful work ensuring everything holds together. Mm -hmm. What other specialized skills are quietly safeguarding our daily lives, working away behind the scenes? Something to ponder. Definitely. And if you are curious, if you want to explore CS Whip more, the source mentioned checking out www.cswhip.com. Good resource. Okay, that's all the time we have for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. See you.